Good evening, Internet World and Universe. This is O.R. Ash, and welcome back to The Drawing Matrix. The last couple episodes of The Drawing Matrix, we've been doing a lot of the Ultimates overhaul. And today, we wanted to break up that flow just a little bit with another co-hosted chaotic calamity, Kuro the Artist. Kuro, say hello. Hello. And that's all he's saying. Um, <laughs> I love and hate doing these videos. Yeah, but... Valentine's Day is just around the corner, so we're gonna try something new. We get to play around with Ben and his aliens a lot in our content, but we don't really get to explore his love life too much. Not that it really matters, since Ben is notorious for having a very shaky romantic life. She's way too good looking for you. Not the point. What about Julie? She was only a little too good looking for me. But we figured it'd be a fun Drawing Matrix video to explore what future these characters may get, and what place in the universe do they have outside of Ben. We chose five years into the future, making them all around their early 20s, as that's what we're most experienced with, because, you know, 5YL. But for this video, we're not really that concerned with making it line up with our 5YL multiverse, so don't worry about it. We're just having fun with this video for now. So Ash and I are going to be bouncing back and forth, switching between who's drawing what, and it makes sense to start off with none other than the most important love interest, or at least the one with the most impact on the story, Julie Yamamoto. So how do you feel about Julie, like, overall, as a character? Let's start with that. Like, she could have really gone somewhere really cool in the series, especially having Ship as, like, her sidekick pet. But, like, the f just the relationship that they did with Ben and, like, making it, like, toxic and argumentative for what almost seems like no reason. Yeah, I feel like with Julie, it's common amongst many shows. Like, once you finally get the two characters together, like those who are always quarreled with a will-they-won't-they -they situation, it's kind of hard to come up with stories of what to do from there and the easiest way is to just challenge their relationship cause some tension see what happens when they push each other around but here it just came off as very malicious either ben was just ignoring julie and other times i feel like julie was very inconsistent with the way that she handled things and what she was comfortable with so it kind of just brought out the worst in both of these characters and i feel like at this point it was best for them to separate but i do think she would continue down the path as a tennis player should i go with a tennis outfit or should i go with like you know what she might be wearing on on the off days all right, kind of want to make ship a little bit bigger. Like maybe he's the size of like a regular dog now. <laughs> he absorbed the dog and got bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think she'd still be with Herb? 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 Something like that? It's what? Javier. I just watched that episode. I swear it was like. I'm pretty sure it's Javier. It looks like Herb to me on the wiki. I know, but it's French. I'll I'll have to listen to it again. Rob, well, put a clip here. Who is this guy? He's Hervé. <laughs> I feel like for sure, Julie would be living in France. She does tennis professionally. I'm kind of picturing her in like a, a little bit more professional clothing than uh, just like a hoodie or something, maybe like a pink business jacket. What kind of hairstyle do you think she'd have? I feel like she would still keep it short. Either she would get it shorter or if her hair was longer, she would put it up into like a top ponytail, I think. What if you gave her one of those visor, a visor hat or whatever? Let me give that a shot. Well, if I'm drawing her in casual clothing, like would that clash with a business suit? Oh, you're doing a business suit i don't know about a suit okay you know what before before i i tackle the the head let me get the outfit in because i'm picturing like a suit like jacket and then i was just gonna take it from there because like you know pro athletes they always dress kind of nice and formally out making public appearances and press conferences and whatnot see if i can keep those bangs those bangs yeah, are may, maybe like yeah the bangs it's tied up in the back this is kind of looking like a, the the gender bent ben we did for that other video a little bit let's see what else i can do the side tufts but then the whole yeah. rest is just like cut all the way down what if we just gave her a ponytail oh i don't know i don't know if i'm in love with this ben shirt sure isn't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my god business women yeah. wear, wear skirts they just Kind of like the pencil skirt a little bit, right? I still think the best look would be the the short in the back with the bangs up front. But I'll give that a, a try in a second. If she's wearing a skirt like that, though, her her legs have to be together a little bit more because they don't really have that much room. She's got little tennis racket earrings. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. I like to think she's still with her. Like may, maybe there was like an, an accident moving into France and it broke some of her trophies. So as a gift to her, he turned them into earrings. Oh, don't make me care about this guy. I don't <laughs> give a shit about Javier. Dude, I swear to God, it's her. Well, the clip that we threw in earlier will say yay or nay. Yeah, one of us is going to look really stupid. He's Hervé. I'm just going to do some quick defining lines on her face just to really get that down. Here we go. Five whale Julie. <laughs> I 
Actually, you know what? I just added a bun to it that I kind of like. It's a lower bun. It's fine. We always butts around with the stuff in post. I mean, hell, the, with the gender bent Ben, I put her in a completely different pose and everything. Oh, yeah, the final <laughs> sketch wasn't even anything we filmed. I am going to be covering my personal favorite of the Ben relationship uh, love interest. But let me re-say that <laughs> lord emperor day a light of the incursion empire in this episode normally typically i i hold off on very fanfic -y type uh type of writing in our projects because i don't want it to be presented in that light i'm i'm doing a little bit of that today though i'm sorry yeah we're having fun with it let us enjoy ourselves atea she is now the current leader of the incursion Catfight. That's one of the last episodes we see her in, and part of the plot with that Persian culture, she has to have a mate, and I believe that's the same thing that happens with Luma, but she runs things slightly different than her, her previous predecessors, whereas they would just go around destroying everyone. She now offers people a choice. Either, I'm gonna destroy your planet, or you can join the new incursion empire that she is founding and spread her influence and control like that. Between alien force to omniverse, which is arguably like at best pushing a year later, Atea matured very quickly due to incursions. Now, is that just in their adolescence to maturity or would you say she continues to age very fast? I believe incursions in general just age quickly. What is she like? equivalent to I, i'd say like mid 30s mid 30s yeah. yeah that 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 works just a little suggestion maybe shrink the head a little bit to make her her body seem a bit older by comparison because she's like mid 30s now i actually completely forgot that aspect of this already <laughs> Taya maybe has like a lot more of a professional image in front of the Empire now, but then Ben shows up and it's just back to her old ways. She's giving like a speech to her people. He's bullfrag in the crowd trying to hype her up like, yeah, woohoo! And she's like, the room is dead quiet. And Ben's like, what? I'm trying to support you, eh? <laughs> I love your bull, Frank. I'm trying to support you. Yeah, hey, Rocky Balboa. <laughs> I like that you're keeping the scarf, though. The scarf is pretty signature. She would have, like, two different outfits. How Millie's has that big old coat. She would have one of those for when she's, like, on the throne and, like, giving speeches. But then she's got this, like, cool kind of tactical underneath suit. The coat should be able to, like, magnetically snap onto her outfit, like, interchangeable. Because back in the older days of incursion, their armor was typically just wrap around cloth so that they can still freely bounce around as they developed like thinner and leaner and denser armor the coat became just a symbolic relic of those times yeah despite the the armor in this version being a lot more like leaner and skin tight it's probably made from a much more denser material because they have more advanced technology not really much different you could do with her face at this point i mean not really i'm mostly just changing her proportions ever so slightly i mean elongated mouth though just to sell the the frogness a bit more yeah we can lean more into her froggy, because everybody looks super froggy in her species, except for her. What if she has that same, like, crest thing that Milius has come up as kind of like, uh, uh... You remember how Tetrax had, like, that front piece that kind of sticks off of his chest, where his helmet closes up? But she has a big ol' a bigger frog helmet that closes up around her entire head. Ooh, that works. I'm liking that. Alright, and with that, I think I'm finished with Atea. Beautiful. And next up, we have a bit of a tragic tale. Elena Validus first showed up in Alien Swarm as a supposed love interest of Ben in his younger years. When she was brought over to the canon, she was taken over by the nanochips. I believe it's implied that Elena herself is gone. Have you ever heard of Spider's Man? Yeah, that's the Peter that's just made up of a bunch of spiders, right? It's, that, it's 10 million spiders that think they are Peter Parker. They not, they're not actually. They ate him and he's dead. You know what? I was kind of thinking the same thing too. Like maybe the chips, like maybe they want to turn a new leaf and not exactly just be good. Perhaps when trying to manifest a role that they can take in society, they take after Elena and also have a very strong database of her consciousness, her emotions, her memories. They can kind of be Elena. My initial thought going into this was leaning a bit heavy into the, the fact that she's made up of the chips. Uh, and I was picturing like a, a very obvious cybernetic woman kind of like the the killer babies or whatever they were called from Kim Possible or was it <laughs> B 
bee it's bee? the killer bees because they're bee the themed. bees there's also ultron made a wife or something in marvel named joe costa uh something like that but i don't i don't know i feel like this, since they're so clearly able to like mimic humans to like the finest degree where you couldn't even tell they're made of chips it would kind of be like counterintuitive to give this appearance because that might imply that they can't look entirely human maybe there's a happy medium so you know how they say nanomech is like the chips plus a little bit of human dna what if elena is a natural occurrence of that it's the chips but with humanity and now she's trying to make more of herself she's trying to make a nanomech species like legitimately that's awesome i didn't even think about just keeping her evil all of these we like them so much we kind of lean towards like oh yeah no they're good they're good friends with ben like they're nice no nah, no nah, elena's still evil then yeah i'm with it should she still try to have a human form then oh for sure because she doesn't want anyone knowing what she's doing oh so she people think she's okay like yeah. she's cured or whatever exactly oh i was gonna go full-on like super villain where she's got oh, like dude. an outfit and stuff do alternates <laughs> yeah may maybe this is the grand reveal like she was doing that and now she's finally at a point where yeah i'm i'm actually still evil what if i gave her like another set of really tiny arms inspire her design a little bit off the original queen's design how it's got that gold with the orange circuitry or whatever Ooh, yeah i'm gonna make her look like a, a fusion between the nano queen and herself she's got like this big brim around the back of her head maybe that could be her collar the queen was also an insect too so maybe we could lean into that as well so she's got like this pattern around her on the ultimate alien thing i think what i'm gonna do is have her head like you ever seen i robot where like they look very robotic except for the head i think i'm gonna do that with her where like she's just very obviously cybernetic but her head just looks like a human head she feels like she wants to identify a little bit more realistically but ultimately the face is the only thing people really care about everything else can just be a little bit more weird she does the whole thing i, I look, look more human, human as to not frighten people, people. no it's it's yeah. very uncanny and mm, scary like, please no, stop yeah, you're still pretty scary you see how on the queen it has robot arms but they're kind of just like insect feelers or whatever yeah i'm gonna do one set those and one with fingers oh you know all those like little feely things she had on her back i think i'm gonna add that straight up give her just the nanomech feet yeah nanomech feet i think i'll do the human thing again where like her arms are human i don't know she's got some chips flying around i do want to keep the hair but on that note maybe i could add her like weird hella spikes like coming out of her head this is gonna be one hell of a drawing to finalize Ye i'm gonna follow the pattern of the ultimate alien design a little bit down here with the belt strap just to help sell that the bottom half of the anatomy is a little more alien pinch her waist with the legs a little bit more because the legs are really skinny pinch that torso this is uh corset training 101 with elena we want your waist so thin that there literally can't be organs in there. All right, well, this turned out pretty weird. It's probably going to need a little bit more refining. Well, that's Elena. <laughs> Honestly, I really like Luma. <laughs> I think, She's yeah, cool. I think she was great. I'm actually, I rewatched Rules of Engagement before this because that has like a fair amount of Ben's love interests to kind of refresh my memory. And I forgot that Julie technically defeats her in combat and that's how Ben isn't betrothed to her anymore. I am no longer worthy of Ben Tennyson's hands. You are his betrothed. Uh -huh. The idea that I have with Luma, she had to become the, the full-on leader of Koros and everything, and can't really find anyone that's, like, strong enough to be her betrothed, and blah, 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 blah. I already said with Atea, said, like, hey, I'm the leader, screw y'all, I don't care what you're saying. I wanted to do something similar with Luma. You don't need a trophy husband to, like, do what you're doing. You guys already do it. But here's the twist. Both planets are still legitimately like, no, that's tradition, you have to have a mate, or whatever. You have to have someone with you to rule. The struggles of being like a female leader, they bond in that sense. They become good friends. Atea comes up with the idea, hey, why don't we pretend to be with each other so that our planets will get off our back and just let us do our thing? And from that, Koros is the first planet signed on to the Incursion Empire. But Yo. with that, Luma travels around with Atea, helping her enforce the either join or die. The reason that they're not 
to get like actually together and say anything to the other. Atea doesn't think that she's literally physically strong enough to be with Luma because of the whole thing, like have to defeat her in combat with Luma just feels like Taya is a lot more uh, competent than her because she's going around and like taking over and running multiple planets at the same time. Dude, I love this. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. That works so well too. Good. I love it. I'm on board. And now let's okay. draw the strong lady. Yeah. <laughs> Her outfit and everything, though, would change whenever she became Queen of Koros. She would wear something a lot more similar to uh, to her father's outfit. With the big fluffy feather stuff. She's got a little bit of fluff on her regular outfit, but yeah, Gar's like decked out. I want her to have a bigger, scarier version of that hammer weapon that she has. Uh, Luma doesn't have any visible hair that we can see in her design. So are you thinking about giving her some hair or keeping it all within the helmet or just, you know, Know, maybe she shaves her head or something. Also, Omniverse, I realized, kind of did change the uh, Tetraman designs ever so slightly. Because before, with forearms at least, the arms came off of like more so their sides, whereas in Omniverse, it, it just sprouts from the arm. Yeah, pack. Omniverse gave them a separate set of pecs. So now Tetramans have four pecs, although females still only have two breasts, which is interesting. But the males like can clearly see like two sets of pecs right there. I don't know if I'm feeling the tied back hair. No? No, I, I I don't know. Maybe it can be braided back like a Viking or something. Ooh, I like that. Koros Incursion Empire. Yeah, there's got to be some type of new title they would come up with because it's like a new empire entirely, right? Yeah, that hair looks great. That looks Thanks. awesome. Both Atea and Luma have long stick weapons now. Do you think they battle each other? Oh, 100%. 100%. I don't want to just have her going like this, but like <laughs> almost every reference. It's kind of the Tetraman thing. You know, they're always flexing. They're very proud of their strength. They go to take like the, the royal portrait of Atea and Luma. Luma's just... What about the Dreadwind Empire? That's cool. That's cool. I like it. Then in that instance, here we have... We have Luma Dreadwind who is the partner of Atea Dreadwind. Next up, we got a fun one, Esther of the Kraho. I think she rivals Julie as one of the most efficient and enjoyable love interests. Esther was actually pretty invested in her relationship with Ben. She did a lot to want to impress him. She depended on him a lot. It's easy to kind of box her into the whole badass, don't need no man kind of person. But then she did also ran off with Antonio. She's got a lot more to her than her tough exterior, but she is the leader of the Kraho. It's actually kind of hard to picture what an older Esther would be. Like, like, how could I represent there's been a genuine progression in, in her story and as a character? So what if she is kind of rejecting the entire Kraho way of life? She is that type of very rebellious type character and very headstrong and makes decisions kind of quickly. And it seems like she's very interested in, in stuff outside of the Kraho pit on Earth. She doesn't want the responsibility of taking care of her people, so she rejects it, which is part of why she goes off with Antonio. She's the leader of a bike gang now you know what that would be cool she's just the leader of a space biking gang now or maybe not even a leader like just she participates in it maybe rojo went off and started like a space biker gang she teams up with rojo indirect like she doesn't know that rojo is a bad guy she goes off thinking like oh yeah no i know what i'm doing i'm doing whatever i want and it's the right thing i'm not hurting anyone then she finds out about rojo and kind of questions her own morality and stuff she overthrows rojo and they appoint her as the leader of the bike gang and she wants to accept the leadership because she feels like she has good guidance on principles and ways of life now but she doesn't want to lead the biker gang so that's what pushes her to come back and eventually take over as the leader again and then antonio becomes the leader of the bike gang i think i'm gonna take more influence from biker outfits than winter outfits and just try to make like a winter version of a biker outfit oh her oh wait isn't she half human is she yeah she is i remember that because i just noticed the noses i'm so so I was I like, why worry. doesn't she have that nose? All right, I'm not, I'm not feeling it entirely yet. I think I need to find like the right jacket. There is like fuzzier leather jackets that I can take inspiration from, like a flight jacket. That would make sense too. She's a biker in space. Gonna change the texture from very fuzzy to more furry, like the original design. She and Antonio split, but like not in a negative way. Yeah, I, I feel like they both kind of knew going into their relationship. It was probably just a fling anyways. Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't think they were that serious. What kind of hair are you thinking? I think I may maybe I'll just do like the spikes again, but like with more thickness and length to it. Craho hair just naturally like stands on end. Like a bandana because of the biker part of her. It just kind of becomes an extension of like long, almost like Sonic the Hedgehog kind of hair. Gotta go stretch. Maybe this jacket can like drop down somehow. Like it's a whole big coat. So I love the double rings of fur that they have for her. I'm thinking to myself like the double tufts are kind of like Kraho signature, but this isn't a Kraho outfit. So I'm going to resist giving her them. These clothes don't stretch with her. I think they they would just to keep things simple, but they're not Kraho. You know, there's enough stretchy species out there in the universe where they, they have material that does this. This is good enough as a basis for 5YL Esther. Yeah, everyone stretch. Oh God. Everyone stretch. <laughs> Next up, we are going to be covering Gwen's best friend, Emily. Her and Ben went on one date. They make a joke about it. From that, it's a love interest now, I guess. Come on, it was one date. You left me at the top of a radio tower. I webbed you to it. 200 feet above the ground. Before we begin, are we committing to the idea that it is in fact Ben's fault that she's in a wheelchair? Yes. Okay. The implication is just too much to not assume. She... Uh, gets into alien law. Once Undertown becomes more of like an established public thing that people know about, she tries to actively sue Ben for causing her injury. But because of all these like legal loopholes and contradictory laws between Earth, Undertown, and what was it? He said he was Spider Monkey and webbed her against the thing, right? Yeah. Contradicting laws, Earth laws, Undertown laws, as well as Arachnachimp laws. So she literally can't sue him. She basically trying to learn as many alien law as possible to establish the first ever law firm in Undertown. She's kind of like the anti Chad Smith. His whole thing is studying all these different laws to take advantage and manipulate the system. Emily wants to do it to give justice to the people that are being abused by said laws. Chad Smith was her mentor at first, but then obviously their moral compasses are in completely different directions. That she acts, she gets in a debate with Chad Smith and maybe she wins. Like she's the first person to ever beat Chad Smith in court. Law and order, Undertown can see us going down the path of like if she's working with aliens and stuff maybe she would upgrade her wheelchair have like some type of hover capabilities but i also feel like maybe she makes it a point to continue using an earth wheelchair because you still have to physically push yourself around as her way of saying like this handicap isn't going to stop me from being strong well now you gotta learn how to do this the the hard way again da -da 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 -da. yeah and she's like all i know is the hard way she can have like some some tech in her chair but like i still feel like it should be a manual thing so remember how when we see the future in omniverse you can kind of see some new design elements of what fashion in ben 10 is going to evolve into with the new plumbers uniforms and all the suits i think she should be wearing something close to that i was going to try to base her outfit a bit off of chad smith's yeah kind of is already wearing something like that with like the split tie he's like i'm already living in the future she starts working for argent like argent eventually trusts her enough to start sharing some of his corrupt secrets of how he runs Undertown because it's Argent so of course he's not doing it legally and she gets a guilty conscience and her first major case is overthrowing the president of Undertown and that's how she gets the attention of Chad Smith. She does that and then she does the mentorship with Chad Smith and then breaks that off. When she gets back though she works for Argent and and uh, like cleans him up essentially. That's how he becomes president of Earth. He's no longer crooked in the future. Yeah he's a little sleazy but he's much more abiding by the law. Man, why is she the most interesting love interest we've had so far? I almost want to give her glasses. I can give her glasses. Maybe her glasses have like little holographic projections of her notes so she doesn't have to carry around a suitcase. You got her looking kind of like uh, Steve Jobs a bit right here. Do you think Ben would make jokes about the fact that she's in a wheelchair? I think he would try it once. He's just genuinely trying to add some levity to the situation and then it would go terrible. I could just see Ben in court saying something really stupid like Emily's just jumping to conclusions. Ben more or less has good intentions, but not really great social awareness in these kind of situations. She she looks like someone you would see in politics. Uh, we didn't come up with a last name for her. What about Horowitz? Emily Horowitz. I could see that. I like that. Emily Horowitz. <laughs> So 
that leaves us with one final love interest that we want to tackle. We're going to do two versions. So both Ash and I are going to have a go at creating a five whale, Kai Green. All right, so the way I see Kai Green, you know, they were told by Spanner that they're destined to be together. But you're supposed to be with her? What could possibly make you think that we belong together? I came here from the future. Maybe they tried to lean into it. They went on one or two dates just to figure it out, but they're still very set in their ways for now. They just agreed, you know, if this truly is our future and our destiny, it's gonna happen no matter what. So how about we both go take our own paths and, you know, whatever happens that brings us together in the future will happen. Or if not, then Spanner was wrong and it was an alternate timeline. But either way, they're not really worried about fulfilling the prophecy of being together. So I imagine Kai is just off living her own life right now, really playing up that Laura Croft role that they gave her in Omniverse. But I feel like with a little bit more of an adventurer feel, like maybe something a little bit more fantasy since she eventually wields, is it is it Excalibur itself? Like, does yes. she wield actual Excalibur? It is Excalibur. Right. I also think she would make a lot of contributions to that museum. She was shown working at in Omniverse. She, like, goes around Earth and tries to uncover all of the ways that aliens were part of Earth to begin with. Like, you know how they said aliens helped us build the pyramids and all of that? Like, it's her mission to truly uncover the territories in Earth. It's like ancient aliens, except she's going in there head first and seeing what's what. And there can be, like, some Omniverse version of it ancient aliens guy that's like her boss or something and she hates him. I think even if her and Ben were to work out and start harboring feelings for each other, they were both too immature at the time to really make that plunge. You know, people grow and change throughout their lives. I kind of want to give her a cape, but maybe not. A backpack would work though. Maybe something that like mirrors the Omnitrix, at least in the aesthetic that she has a watch, but instead it's just like this very like advanced piece of technology that can like map the terrain around her, pull up extra net resources with a strong signal. It's like a proto tool. Yeah, it can have like a little grappling hooks too that could, she can shoot out. Yeah. A nice little, a little wrist gadget. I do already like her hair as is though in Omniverse. I oh, the ponytail. Stick with that, yeah. I think I'm gonna give her the same kind of leg wear that she's wearing in the future. I think by now she can have some of that technology already. She just goes in and like steals a bunch of plumber stuff to use for her own stuff. It's like Ben said it was fine. I kind of want to see if there's a way I can give her something of Ben's on her. The LeBowen fur. She does care. I think I'm going to put it on the, the sword. I do want it to be like a metal sword. I don't want it super sci-fi. I still want to keep her relatively grounded. All right. Battle extraordinaire, fearless adventurer, keeper of the museum of alien creatures. 5YL Kai Green version 1. <laughs> So it's, to my understanding, you have your own thoughts on a 5 whale Kai Green, is that right? I do. You do. And I don't know what any of these plans are, so this is going to be just as new to me as it will be to you. This is something I've actually talked about on a stream before. Kai, as well as Ben, both don't like the idea of the fact like they're destined to be with each other. So they do try to avoid each other. Kai tries to go off and do her own exploratory architect thing, similar to how you're saying. The way that she gets funding, though, is that... That she has a TV series, which is a brand new iteration of the now cancelled show Weird World, which was formerly hosted by VV Argost. Oh snap, I think I I've I've vaguely, told you about this yeah. once before. I yeah. Think, yeah. Going in jungles and adventuring, trying to find treasures. At first she's really bad at it. But then she runs into the secret Saturday. She gets documentation of them and what they're doing and, and ends up blackmailing them that she's going to leak the footage of them specifically on her show unless basically letting her tag along with their adventures, going to like film creatures and treasures. So basically Kai joins the Saturdays, but publicly it's just Kai. It's Weird World with Kai Green. And the Saturdays are always off camera and helping her out and everything. Okay. Correct. And with this, she would start dating Zack. Zack does not know that she knows Ben. Maybe the jealousy of her being with Zack is what starts to unlock the feelings that he resists having for her. Ben has to admit to himself that he likes Kai or else like why is he jealous? I don't want it to seem like Zack is just being used as a pawn in this story. I feel like Kai probably is actually developing feelings for him. Yeah. So whenever they all meet up again it actually is like a oh crap type of moment. I'm going to lean a little bit into the Secret Saturdays uniform design. I am giving her a big old video camera. Maybe she's got like a body cam then? Oh, eventually, yes. But I think it'd be funny at first if she had to lug around a giant <laughs> studio camera. Okay. 
I'm with it. By 5YL, she has a Horus unit, and it's painted orange like the Saturdays. I'm doing that instead. The ship that connects him to the plumber's archives is disconnected, so he's, like, independent and isn't part of the Horus hive. Oh my god, I love that. I'm giving it one eye, though. It's essentially just a big Taurus. Like a Taurus that grew up? Yeah. Yeah, Tauruses are made to be a lot more of a bare-bones Horus unit. I wouldn't say, like, Tauruses grow up to become Horuses. I think it works. It's like everything has like buckles usually in these kind of things where it's like, I don't know, very, I don't want to say military, just that kind of like, uh, it's kind of survivalist. Yeah, yeah survivalist. Kind of give her bigger boots. I imagine she'd be like stomping around jungles and stuff a lot with them. What kind of like television personality do you think she would be? Do you think she would be like very just straightforward herself on TV or do you think she'd try oh, to like fuck. play it up and make a presentation? She would definitely try to play it up but break character a lot because she'd get pissed off. Maybe one of the quests she tries to go on is to find the Sword of Akpu and she goes there and it's destroyed all <laughs> ready and like you see the mayan god's body rotting away yes yes i like that that's the first thing the saturdays take her to do they later find like tetramen dna on there or something and she figures out it was ben and she gets so mad like ben ruined her first mission i have my iteration of kai green for 5yl <laughs> I feel like there's ways to like combine elements of both of our Kai's. Like maybe take the elements that I thought of for her relationship with Ben. Whereas they're just like, well, if the future's inevitable, then let's find out. And they just leave each other. And then she decides to go stay with the Saturdays and she gets this outfit and all of that. And she could still come back to the museum. Oh, uh, Weird World itself is based in a museum now. Yeah, this went a lot better than I thought it would. I was afraid this idea might be a little hard to do because it's uncharted territory for us. We got eight solid designs down. We got some great lore designs. yep we each did four we did eight designs we've been recording for like six and a half hours yeah this has been a long one in fact we recorded so much that there was a lot of footage that i thought was pretty amusing but was cut from this video for time but you can check out some bonus unedited footage from this session over on our second channel the rust bucket which will be linked below thanks for checking out this video and let us know which love interest design was your favorite down in the comments and as always keep it fizzy